All right, I think we'll call the meeting to order. It is 8.30 on January 3rd, 2024. I will call the Environment and Land Use meeting to order. Uh, roll call of committee members. Randy Severson. Stacy Klein. Dave Larson. Tony Munson. Hey, Andy Todd. Tom Waldera. And staff. Haley Paso. Mike Cornman. And Callan Nelson. I suppose I should do it myself. <laughs> uh, I certify the open meeting law requirements have been met with proper posting. Uh, we have a 19 item agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by Todd. I'll second. Second by Waldera. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Has everyone had a chance to read through our meeting minutes from December 6th? Any corrections or additions? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Klein, second by Todd. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And it is, you got the rules? No, you got that. It is uh, 8.32, and I will, well, for next on the agenda is a public hearing and land use change rezone from EA2 to primary egg from, from Douglas, J. Clink, Town of Arcadia. Yep, you, could you read the call? All right. There will be a public hearing before the Trumbull County Environment and Land Use Committee on Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. in the County Boardroom of the Courthouse, 18600 Hobson Street, Whitehall, Wisconsin. The purpose is for a land use change or rezone from exclusive ag two to primary ag on approximately 68.3 acres, more or less for the purpose of creating two residential lots. The location is all of government lot seven and that part of the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter lying westerly of the center line of Burlington Road, all in section six, township 20 north, range eight west, town of Arcadia, Trump, Wisconsin, parcel no tax number is listed. Upon request, a map of the property may be um, obtained from the Department of Land Management. The hearing is requested by Douglas J. Clink, petitioner landowner. Trumple County invites you to join this meeting as follows. To provide public comment on these hearings, please call 715-538-1894. Your attendance and comments are encouraged at this hearing. If you are unable to attend and have any questions, please call Verge Gamreth with the Department of Land Management at 715-538-1916 or email at verge.gamroth at county.tremplo.wisconsin.us. If you are unable and desire to submit a written comment, please send your written comments to the Department of Land Management, PO Box 67, Whitehall, Wisconsin, 54773, or email to Verge, once again, the email listed. All emails and written comments must be received by January 2nd, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Please know that written comments will be read at the public hearing up to 250 words. All written comments must include the name and address of its author and the request that the letter be read at a particular meeting date. Any special interest groups or expert witnesses will be allowed 20 minutes to give a presentation and must register at least one week prior to the meeting date by calling Verge Gamroth of the Department of Land Management at 715-538-1916. Sincerely, Verge Gamroth, the zoning technician. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I will call the public hearing to order at 835. Um, if anyone at home wishes to offer any public comment, they can call in at 715-538-1894. Verge, do you have a description you can read? Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the Clink and Doug. Do you want to introduce your daughter? This is my daughter over there. Okay. Um, they're here today to rezone their land from EA2 to primary ag on 68.3 acres to split the lot to sell to his daughter. 
Um, this was published in the newspaper December 13th and December 20th. A letter was sent to the town clerk notifying her of the hearing and County Board Supervisor Andy. Um, letters were sent to all adjoining landowners. I did receive one response or one inquiry from a neighbor, which I'll read into the record later. Um, the land use plan is exclusive ag. However, in this particular case, if these lots are allowed to rezone and to be made into separate lots, it will actually clear up a zoning violation of two homes on one zoning lot. So, and the town is in agreement. I have a letter from them and I think you all received that also. And if approved, this would go to full county board on January 15th. Okay, thank you. Um, once again, if anyone home wishes to offer any public comment, they can call 715-538-1894. Um, could you read the letter from the town, please? Okay, it's dated December 6, 2023 from the town of Arcadia regarding Amanda Cruz Clink and Douglas Clink. The Town of Arcadia Board of Supervisors was informed by Amanda Cruz Clink that she is requesting a parcel of land on Burlington Road to be rezoned from exclusive ag two to primary ag. The Town of Arcadia Board of Supervisors unanimously passed a motion at their December 5th, 2023 special board meeting stating that they support this request. Sincerely, Lynn Axness, Town of Arcadia Clerk. Thank you. Um, is there anything you wish to add from what's been said so far? Okay. Um, you said you had a landowner? That yes, I did get an email inquiry from Tom Stoner, and um, his question was, Hi, Verge, this is Tom Stoner, one of Doug's neighbors, and I'm looking for information on what he is up to by rezoning into residential lots. I'd like to get a map and any other pertinent information. Please email me, email me back. Um, so I did send him the map and the application, and um, I said, Tom attaches a rezone application the proposed split of property they want to make now. I believe the property will be deeded to his daughter slash children. Let me know if you have any further questions. And I, this was on December 19th, and I received nothing, nothing back from else. him. Okay. Okay. All right, once again, if anyone at home wishes to offer any comments, 715-538-1894. And I don't, has anyone registered to testify? I don't think anyone yeah, here. I'm not aware. So, okay, at 835, I will close public comment and entertain a motion for further discussion. Motion by Klein, second by Larson. Discussion from the committee, questions? Dave? Ag two, but our agenda says primary ag. Um, yeah, the the land use plan says that it should stay an exclusive ag, but they want to res request a rezone to primary ag. Okay. <clears throat> it states on the application too. It says government lot seven. Is that like homestead property at one time or? Yeah, I no, noticed that part of the description too. If that was any That's just a part of the description, description. Okay. government lot. Verge, could you reiterate the zoning issue that this is clearing up? Our zoning for our zoning allows only one house per parcel. We look at any zoning parcel as as one parcel that's anything that's owned in the same entity. Like say Verge Gamroth has a lot or a land, all the land she owns in Verge Gamroth is one lot for zoning purposes. In this case, Doug Clink owns all the lots and he has two houses on those lots. So that in fact is a zoning violation. Okay. That's what I thought okay. <clears throat> Any other questions from the committee? Yeah, does moving does moving the property to primary egg meet the requirements for residential lots? Yes. I apologize that I don't under I don't fully know that. Our zoning has to do with density. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this would raise the density because if you're in an exclusive egg zoning you have to have one house per thirty five acres. So obviously they would need seventy acres to be able to split into two lots. Therefore they have to rezone to a higher density 
which is um, two per 40 for primary egg to allow for that density split. Okay, thank you. Would there be any further development on the other side of the road since you own that parcel too? There's the two homes are on the one side of the road. I don't think there will be a kind of I'm just wondering if we should class that to R8 versus primary or? Well, no, just as a note, by virtue of the road going through there, that across the road is already a separate lot. Okay. Any other questions, comments, Dave? So with, with that answer, when were, when were these two houses built? Were they built pri prior to the zoning? I don't have that information for you right now, but I can get that for you. Um, because we have a policy item that says any, any building on that lot prior to the, the adoption of the zoning law does not count against density. Right, but I, I don't have the information as to when those houses were built. But they, they would still need to rezone whether, whether the houses were there at that time or not. They would still need to rezone to a higher density to split the lots to make them do different ownership. Mm -hmm. To be, what's that? I'd say to be legal now, no. present day. Thanks for the information. Okay, any other questions from the committee? Concerns? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, all in favor, in favor of approving this rezone, land use change and rezone, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We will send this to full county board on January 15th. Thank you for final approval. So thank you. Thank you. Um, next item on agenda, resolution amending county code chapter 18 revision. This is for cleanup, as I understand it. Yeah, this is, uh, this uh, will put the final completion on moving land information out of the Department of Land Management. Um, we really needed to have this um, completed two and a half years ago, prior to my arrival here at Trempeau County. It didn't happen, so we're just gonna dot some I's, cross some T's. And all these, um, and all these, um, and a lot of the, the code there, there's references to the Department of Land Management uh, performing land information department activities. We're just attempting to uh, clarify those day-to-day -day operations would remain the same. So it's just where it says land management, changing that to land records uh, primarily throughout that. And uh, so if there's any other language that you guys would like to see clarified, this is the time to do that. Okay. Um, Tony brought up an interesting point in our in our talk right before the meeting. <clears throat> There's some responsibilities transferred, physical or work responsibilities that will be transferred to land records. Number one, are they prepared for that? Number two, since our exec finance oversees land records, does this have to come from here to Environment, uh, exec finance in order to be fully justified? Um, one, exec finance already addressed uh, the moving of land records um, out of DLM in its action in June of 2021. Um, it, yeah, in the code, this code will change activities on paper in the code. What it doesn't change is what's happening on the ground. Day-to-day um, -day operations. Both departments will continue to function as they have been functioning. 
this change in the code will just catch us up as an organization to what's happening in day-to-day -day operations. So the day-to-day -day operations, who collects the fee for the sign? DLM. So that party has to make two trips to two different departments? No. Well, well land records is upstairs. Zoning is going to be no. downstairs. No. Current operations, DLM collects the fees for the signs. DLM Correct. pays for the signs. Correct. Land records issues, A determines number. what the number is. DLM requests a sign from the highway department, have it made. We get billed from the highway department. DLM pays that fee. Mm -hmm. That's how it op operates, how it operated in 2023. That's the intent on how it should be operated in 2024. So land records will not be installing the signs. It'll be current. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing's changing day-to-day -day operations. No changes. We're just trying to get the code caught up. Well, it's kind of misleading in the resolution. That's why. I mean, it doesn't specifically. That's pretty define. clear. It's pretty clear. Mm. So your interpretation. And that's your interpretation. Uh, um, any comments from your department? Obviously, this is directly related to your department. So, um, I I just found out about this on yesterday because I was on vacation, um, and I. I have no issue with it, but I think before we we approve anything, we should really itemize what's being done where, and so it's clear. It hasn't been clear for 10 years. Why of, wasn't of who's doing what duty? It's it's not clear in there. In in this document. Correct, and I think if we're moving <coughs> forward, we should make sure it's clear. And we should sit down with the parties involved too. The parties involved have spoke on this in the past. Uh, um, emergency management coordinator should be involved in this. It's really primarily what's impacted here is really pretty much land records and department of land management. And uh, that's who's impacted on this. Um, emergency management is not impacted on this. I guess it's been out of uh, it's been in, inaccurate for an awfully long time already I definitely appreciate bringing it to the table to uh, increase its accuracy or make it accurate if there is any thoughts that, that other areas may want to weigh in or further define the document I don't think there's any reason not to ask for that input um, before we finalize the document at this point given that it's already been as long as it has been um, you know, in its current state, um, whether that results in any changes to the document as presented today, I guess doesn't really, it, it remains to be seen, but either way, people can lay eyes on it and make a determination. It just, it can't go, it's been two and a half years, and then as Ann said, it's been inaccurate for at least 10. Um, so it, it just it can't wait any longer. We need to address it. Sure. So if we can get it on the agendas for whomever needs to be involved, at least in my opinion anyway. What's that? You'd have to amend your agenda. Again. If you want it this month. Three is I thought it was four. <laughs> I got something else to talk about. <laughs> so you got another one coming anyway. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, part of me is wondering if it makes any sense for it to go to any committee or if the people who are directly involved shouldn't come with I, I don't I don't sit here with any hands-on information as to how this is handled should be handled nor do I care to I don't even care to have any input but the people that should should come back with the uh, here's what I would suggest at this point let's ever <clears throat> whoever needs to be involved have your meeting as department heads or whatever, put a document together, bring it back to us, and then you can send it, that a document to the appropriate committees. But I, putting this on our agendas at this point doesn't make any sense. So that would be my ask. I mean, how does the committee feel about that? Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. 
Silence is deafening, so. <laughs> I just note that on page 18-4, there is reference to land management that should be corrected to land records also, I guess, based on what I'm reading anyway, um, just as a, as a note. But I don't have a problem with the comment that was said. Okay. So. <clears throat> Currently, our motion was to bring the resolution up for discussion, correct? That was Correct. It. We actually don't need a motion on that right now, I don't believe. No, we don't. Have we don't. Okay, that's what I'm questioning, what the mm. motion, what yeah. the motion We have no was. motion at this motion. point. <clears throat> <clears throat> Make a motion that all parties that feel they need to be involved in review of this document <clears throat> do so, and then bring it back to the Department of Land Records, um, is it the Finance Exec Committee, for review and approval. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that, although I'd like to see the parties named in this motion. Who oh, should, like who, who the involved. actual parties. So that I guess we'd look to staff for probably. Um, I, I, I would be involved. Um, I think corp Corporation Council should be involved and I think emergency management should be involved. And no land management? And, uh, well, and and land land, management of course land management. Okay. Well, let's state that. Maybe the county administrator, you know, is, we got a month until they start to be involved uh, yep. in the process as well. That's fine. Okay. That seems like a good list of people. March. Look for them. March. Yes, severely. <laughs> That's why I wish... Okay, so that's that sound like a good motion or friendly amendment? Shall amend as stated, yes. Although I will comment that I'm not sure that if the administrator is really Needed. necessary to be involved in this work and it would delay it. So. Yeah, I. this is a policy thing from within, so I don't know if it's a... Because we did a, discuss this in September, and Ms. Waldera brought it up after discussing the land record that says in our September minutes about 911 issues, and it would... You just assign them, we complete the process. And, and I think that's what needs to be detailed, is whose involvement is where sure. going forward, because who knows how long we'll all be here, so... Nope, uh, that's fine. Okay, so we have a motion on, on the floor. Any uh, other discussion? Hearing none, uh, call the vote. All in favor of approving the motion to have land records, land management, emergency management, and the court council recommend correct language as to what is that, uh, happening in procedure. Uh, that's the motion. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We will revisit that as soon as possible. Uh, and item number eight is a resolution amending the 2024 land management budget. And that has been an ongoing discussion. So this has to do with um, the exec finance committee requesting us to increase our fees um, to meet our budget. Yeah, so, well, they kind of, uh, yeah, uh, they increased the revenue requirements in the budget and this committee uh, looked at reviewing increasing fees. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, support for doing that and there was a better option uh, to address the um, to address the um, uh, revenue requirements, and that was by eliminating the building and inspection um, non-lapsing account. Um, again, that account was set up prior uh, back when we had a, uh, a county employee um, doing the work of building inspections. Uh, there was a good purpose for it at that time when we went to a private contractor. The, the requirement for that uh, non-lapse account kind of went away. So by eliminating that account and moving that into the regular part of the budget, we can now assign those uh, administrative fees to um, address those increased revenues. So it really just structurally 
uh, makes our, our budget uh, to reflect how we're being staffed right now. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Questions, comments? Okay, Tony's got the question, go ahead. So these numbers, are they the projection revenue for 2024 or is that the revenue or the numbers that are in that account currently? Those are the budget numbers for the 2024 budget. budget. So, because we did remove, we put 140,000 from that account into comprehensive planning. This reflects the 2024 budget Proposed. expenses and revenues. Yep. What will happen with that non-lapsing non account, it will close out and I believe go into the general fund. Right, if we close out a, no, a non-lapsing account in 2024, whatever that balance is, will go in back to the general fund. Correct. That's the normal. Yes. If you close out, but wouldn't it be easy for tracking for us and keeping that revenue separate? Yeah, we're amending amending the budget to so we can address the increased revenue requirements that exec finance put in the 2024 budget so instead of raising the fees which this committee um, didn't necessarily want to do um, we're, we're moving the building inspection expenses of re revenues into the regular part of the land management budget I don't know what the balance is in the account right now Oh, maybe Amy does. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so right now, currently, we are anticipating like six thousand dollars will be left in that account. Yes, seven. That's why it was four. Yeah. When you say left in that account, you mean after that's, all? That is what is being carried over. Carried over. From twenty-three. Yeah, got it. That's what's yep. in the non-lapsing yep. as of twenty twenty-three. So if we have a shortfall in that, then do we supplement that extra 15,000 from a different account then or we, is that? We wouldn't have a shortfall. It's impossible to have a shortfall. So if we collect 60,000, we'd have 70, because of your 12% increase or whatever to cover. What we expense. mark up yeah, above the, the cost of the so permit. So we, okay. we can't lose money. lose money on this. Right, but I mean, so this, Basically, these are just fictitious numbers now to prove that we'll have 15,000. They're not fictitious. They're very real numbers. They're budgeted numbers. They're, they're numbers. All of our numbers, they're just like the numbers in the rest of our budget. They're real budgeting numbers. It's a plan for spending and collecting revenues. That's what a budget well, the, is. Yeah, so that's what the budget numbers would be. The only way it goes down is if we don't <coughs> have as many inspections to do. That's my but then point our bill goes down and the revenue goes down that's, with it. Yep, yeah, that's my so actually that's what I mean. These numbers yeah. are fictitious, but I mean he says they're it's set. That's what I what we expect. Expect it's a budget. Yeah. 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 It's proposed is what it is. Anticipated Projections. revenue. Projections. Yeah. 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 It's a good way to look at it. But that's my question, is if we're run short, so but I mean still the fifteen thousand is there no matter what the revenue stream is, it could be more. Any uh, other thoughts from the committee? Questions, concerns? So then will it still be a part of the tracking and the accounting system? We'll know from the general fund then what our fees are going towards then moving forward instead of it being an itemized line item now? Building inspections, it's its own account. So if it's going to the general fund, or will we still be able to track those numbers? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. part of the budget. Everything's part of the budget. Are you, you're not creating a new no. Yes, he is. No. We, no. That's what I thought these new codes are on the bottom. Those account numbers are already reflected in oh, our budget. So we will be able to determine and track those just like okay. we have in years past. Okay. Maybe it would be helpful to explain um, what that account number is reflective of then. What is, where is this money going in the budget? What is the 101.54564333? What is that? That's, that's a planning okay. okay, okay, that's helpful to me. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. I'll call the vote. All in favor of approving the 
this resolution. Actually, do we have a motion on the floor to approve it? Need that first. I'll make that motion to approve it. Motion by Todd. I'll second. Second by Waldera. Now, all in favor of approving this uh, resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, item number nine is an assessment of regulated regulator barriers to housing. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I am uh, having difficulty sharing my screen. So, but uh, essentially, um, if you remember. Uh, one of the requirements of the ability to access some of the funds created by the legislature in 2023 related to housing, um, those, these are um, grant funds uh, for residential communities, residential developments, affordable housing, and also housing tied to downtowns. Um, there's two requirements, one to revise your comprehensive plan the housing element if you haven't done so in the last five years and then the other element is to do a regulatory uh, uh, analysis of the reg regulatory barriers uh, to housing um, in the county so um, I'm gonna essentially go just talk briefly and cut right to the summary of um, and I will I will finalize the um, the written report before I leave and get that out to you guys but essentially what I went through is all the different regulations in the county zoning code and as it impacts uh, towns in the county I did not get into every incorporated municipality because that's a whole different level of work and there's different codes for each and every community so this is just for the unincorporated communities of the county and um, I think overall um, the it, our, our barriers to housing are generally on on the smaller side overall um, and my recommend uh, recommendations are um, uh, the opportunities that Trumple County have include the following um, revising the county code to allow for accessory dwelling units in residential and agricultural zoning codes um, um, if you remember accessory dwelling units are uh, kind of like um, sometimes referred to as mother-in-law houses or a secondary house on a piece of property what's really interesting is our county code allows via conditional use accessory dwellings on commercial industrial properties so like if you have a an, ap uh, uh, an apartment above a restaurant we have that we allow that via conditional use so that's a good thing we're ahead of the curve there um, where we're behind the curve is in the residential area and so this whole accessory dwelling unit topic is kind of uh, one of the new things people are addressing and so that's something um, the county could work on there uh, we could continue to work with uh, incorporated municipalities on higher density uh, residential zoning in those in those municipalities from a planning standpoint um, on the zoning map, when you take a look at um, the planning around our incorporated communities, a good thing that's seen is we're planning for higher density residential uh, around uh, each of the incorporated municipalities. So you see on the, on the future land use map, you see R20, meaning 20 units per 40. That's a good thing because affordability of housing is closely tied to density. So we're seeing that. What we're not seeing is that R20 zoning implemented. Um, what we're seeing is trans ag zoning. Um, and so if someone wanted to develop a piece of property around a municipality, they would have to go through a rezone and that would slow down the process of doing, doing the project. So again, one of the, the ways of reducing barriers is to have land properly zoned ahead of time so when a development a developer comes in that, that they can move forward without having to do a rezone so you can if you take a look at the zoning map you'll see that there's a lot of this trans egg zoning and so that would not impact farming in the respect that they could continue as uh, non-conforming use but that would that would be a barrier could reduce um, we talked about a little bit in the past regarding 
cooperative boundary agreements. A lot of times if incorporated municipalities want to grow or whatever, we can be proactive and uh, working with towns and um, cities and villages in doing cooperative boundary agreements for expansion where there's higher residential development. And then the last item here is again, this is again from a regular reducing regulatory barriers. This is the approach is you could uh, eliminate non mandated uniform dwelling code regulations. And here in Trempolo County, you could um, address that by eliminating the need for UDC permits for alterations and additions to homes built prior to 1980 and also reduce uh, UDC permits for residential garages. So those are regulatory barriers you could choose to reduce. And again, it reduced costs, speeds up the process, things like that. So really there's only, there's kind of, of those topics, there's one, two, three, four, five items. Um, uh, a lot of the items when it comes to sewer and water um, are they're uniform regulations at the state level that the county doesn't necessarily control so those aren't really things you can address uh, I think the re real big changes on affordability and workforce housing is really going to come in the villages and the cities I think that's where you're ultimately going to see it but I think there's some things to really hang your hat on the accessory dwelling units and commercial areas um, some of those types of things but overall I didn't see find a whole lot of barriers that we could change as a county ourselves. Uh, and a lot of those things like private on-site pouch septic systems, those are uniform, they're health and safety kinds of things. Soils are important, depth of groundwater is important, and those kinds of things you just, you wouldn't want to change anyways. You want to have safe water. So those are, those are kind of the, that's kind of just a brief summary of all those kinds of things addressing for regulatory barriers. <clears throat> Thank you for your. I uh, actually look forward to reading the report when you get it emailed out to us because it'll be interesting. It'll and the, there's an uh, attachment from another community on accessory dwelling units. It kind of summarizes those topics. So and sure. I found I found a, a real neat um, publication kind of summary thing from another community that that will help um, help everyone learn about those that topic. Okay. So does that, our next steps then, are we waiting for the emailed report from you, Mr. Corman? Yep. And then are we bringing this back to um, the committee to discuss whether there be action taken from that report? I think that would be a fair discussion to have. Do we want to, you know, once we've reviewed the report, do we want to consider anything or not? State code, I think regulates your septic by the number of bedrooms per house so if you add an accessory because what is it I think 910 gallons for a two-bedroom house is minimum or whatever and a thousand gallons for a three-bedroom I don't know what three and four I don't know you know if you're adding bedrooms or living quarters I don't know how that affects as Mr. Corman stated it's more for municipalities mm -hmm. than the rural that's I mean I don't know if it's I don't know if we even have any right well, we can read any, the report. Any addition of, say, an addition to a existing house or an assessing dwelling unit, the septic system. If anytime you add bedrooms, it would have to be. The, you'd either have to add another system, or or increase the size of the current system. Yeah. yeah. Which is nothing we can do about that. It's it's but yeah. It's okay discussion to have. Yeah. It's easy. Well, just a question with that. So then when they originally build, do they anticipate maybe adding on or is that usually is it built just to the number I would of say in mo I would say in most cases, houses when houses are built, they're built for the existing number of bedrooms. Most of the time, probably 90, 95% of the time. So then just stupid question. You have a three-bedroom house um, because this happens right and then you actually have 12 people living in this three-bedroom house because that's the reality of it in some situations I'm failing to understand I guess how those sewers then are 
managing. <laughs> They're probably more than likely strained if you have that many people doing laundry, those and that kind of stuff, and all the other things that go, all the water usage, that, that would be likely over the capacity of that. And so there is some personal level of personal responsibility for the property owner uh, to uh, make sure that, but, but that's how the state statutes on uh, septic systems is written. Uh, it's essentially written that uh, the septic tank and the drain field are based on number of bedrooms and the number of bedrooms equals two people per bedroom. So if you have a three bedroom house, that's really a, a system designed for six people living there okay. all the time. I always learn something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just a little offshoot from that. Do we have a county ordinance that says, that says anything about the number of non-related people living in a, in a house? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. 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 Uh, well, thank you for the research. It will be, and I think we'll plan to bring it through and we can discuss next February meeting. We'll see what, what we want to tackle if, if we can tackle anything. Um, item number 10, conservation update. I believe that is from Haley. She has a few things to update us on. Okay, I believe you guys should have gotten this in your committee packet. So I just put it together a 2023 overview of what conservation um, accomplished as far as like practices and the number of projects, the funding spent. Um, so you can kind of see where we were at. This graph isn't the best because with NMFE, so the Nutrient Management Farmer Education, there's a lot more because it's smaller payments. So that's why it kind of skews this graph. So it's not the best one. I will just say that off the bat. Um, for the funding sources, again, we're pretty, we spent a decent amount. We're carrying over some because of the weather um, and contractors being delayed because of weather so we didn't get everything in so we'll have um more for 24 is the plan so these were the hard practices that were installed a good variety um that were completed in 23 and we're carrying over three land and water bond contracts um, and then four county cost share ones so soft practices, that is um, nutrient management, cover crop, anything like a one year type situation on the, on the landscape. Um, we spent 10,840 um, on, of our SAG funds on cover crops this year with six different producers. And then we also dipped into our county cost share for, some con or for the cover crops um, with two different producers totaling 474 acres of cover crops, cost shared for 23. We did get a um, new contract for a nutrient management plan. He is working on that over these winter months, so it will be paid in 24. So we did get it signed in 23, it just gets carried over to be paid in 24. So that's really exciting. We haven't had um, one of the new nutrient management plans a contract in since I've been here at least, so in for two and a half, almost three years now. So, which is, it's exciting to get a new one here. Nutrient management, farmer education. Um, we spent a little over 16,000. We had 36 uh, producers utilize this funding source, which included soil sampling and the nutrient management classes put on by Western Tech. Um, and we also help out at those events as well. So. Um, we also helped with the nutrient management farmer education. We supplemented the producer led winter event. So the BTFN group, they put on a event in March of 23 and we supplemented that as well with this because we were, it was for educational purposes. So we were able to use this funding for that as well. Um, this, the next couple 
our overviews of kind of the long scale. Um, so I did over, I think, six years. 24 is on here because I wanted to show what is actually being carried over. So you can kind of see the trend here. Um, spiked in looks like 21, but that's because we had a large scale trim grant um, and we were able to use a lot of that funding at that point. So 24 is looking pretty good right now. So I'm pretty excited. Um, number of projects. Really, if you look at an average, we're pretty consistent throughout the years. So this year was low because of the weather situation. So, and then these graphs get really confusing. If you wanna look at them further, it breaks it out by the funding source and how much money and projects we do per funding source. So I don't need to go in depth of those. You guys should have them in your emails. If you have questions, please let me know and I can discuss them further either, you know, next month or if you guys wanna stop in, give me a call, whatever. So more than willing to discuss further on those, but just wanted to give you an overview of 23 that we were accomplishing. So um, a few other updates before I get into um, letter A here, which I think is the work plan. So silent auction um, for the land and water conference. I am still in the works of getting donations for or baskets for that silent auction. Um, I presented to PTED yesterday and they were really excited about it. I think a couple committee members were going to also donate, so that's really exciting. Um, I have um, Amy donated a few things. I'm gonna donate some stuff. So we have a good basket. If you guys have any other thoughts or uh, wanna donate anything, that would be just fine. If you guys have like a little small business or last couple of years, I know they've had, you know, I actually won something for like a pheasant mix. So I was able to get seed from, you know, the Land and Water Conference, which was actually really exciting. Um, and so it's just a whole slew of different things. Like I think I'm gonna have my family make a stained glass and, you know, see how that goes over. So we'll see how that goes. If you guys have any questions, give me a call or stop in. Um, is this, this is one yeah. basket. There's multiple. We can make as many. We can as make we want. as many as we want. Okay, because I know one is themed for park, yep, right? Exactly. So now, yes. So depending on whatever else you get, you're yep. gonna figure out. Yep. Where, where I'm to gonna put figure it out and, okay. if I want one basket, two, seven, ten, however many I can kind of receive. So we're just going to have different, probably different slew of baskets. So. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, on the line of youth education, because the proceeds from the silent auction go to youth education, um, our poster and speaking contest is next Thursday. So this year we had 90 posters submitted um, and we had six speakers sign up this year. So we will be full house with posters and speaking contests, so, which is really exciting. Um, poster is going to be during the day. I, so I have all the posters. I bring in multiple people throughout the courthouse to then judge and pick the top ranking for each um, category. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then for the speaking contest, that'll be at 5.30 on Thursday, the 11th. Um, and those will be, I will have three judges and Kellen has graciously volunteered to be a, a speaking judge again this year. Mm -hmm. And we will be hosting that and it's always exciting to see what these students bring to the table and speak upon. And it's really interesting and in just their, their drive to talk in front of people that they don't know. It's really cool to see. Um, so that's really exciting. I can't wait to, to listen to those. Um, design work is getting done here. We have, besides the one carrying over, we had a couple more applications come in. So we're getting those designs done. Um, we have a couple I think there was a couple waterways. We have a manure storage closure again. We have grade stave, so a good variety again this year. Um, nutrient management plans. Rick is getting um, paperwork out to get those submitted by April 15th. That is the deadline to get that in for the county so that we can get them processed and then sent to DATCAP for the reporting process. Mining fees are due January 31st for the renewal, so we're getting fees for all of those. I'm working with Morgan um, to get those in and start working with those um, 
operators to start setting up inspections and getting moving with those mining inspections and the fees. Farmer-led group, we are now the collaborator. Morgan and I attended the meeting in December, which was really interesting, and they're, the members are excited to see kind of a change in hands as far as who the collaborator is. So Scott Stipetich, who was Pheasants Forever, he was the collaborator for the last three years. Um, he is now passing the baton to us, and he is excited to just be able to spread a little bit more of his knowledge and wealth throughout even the region and not just our group. So um, we will be working more closely with the farmer led. We have a meeting, I believe, either the 9th or 10th. So next week, they're still firming down the date. So we'll see what date that's going to be. Um, Tree and Shrub is wrapping up here. I am down to the last little bit of tree. So if anyone wants something, get them in now. Um, I'm saying the last day to order is January 31st unless the trees run out and then it's whenever they run out. So, and then looking forward, March 6th through the 8th, that is the Land and Water Conference. So it, you guys can also attend. So I just wanted to just highlight that as well. Um, our staff will be going to that and we're picking the conference sessions and getting signed up here um, in the next coming weeks. So I think you guys should have gotten an email from Land and Water. If you didn't, let me know and I can forward that on to you. Now that that was hopefully a quick overview. Land or the 2024 annual work plan. So this is something we have to submit to DATCAP every year. And it goes through what we are expecting to accomplish in 2024. So I went through applications we have, the information we hope to get out to landowners and kind of what we're striving to accomplish in 2024. I met with our staff here so I wanted to get it out to you guys to see if there was anything updated you would like um, otherwise I'm going to finalize this and get it sent off to DACAP so that they can have it and we can start working towards all of these different goals they are broken out into categories so we really have to look at what our um, projects and practices are going for some of them can fall into multiple categories, but we pick the one that it strives to hit the most. Mm -hmm. So for instance, like a grassed waterway, is it for water quality or is it for you know stopping of erosion and loss of cropland? We kind of look at which one it falls better into. So that's why you see sometimes like grade staves might be on here twice, but that's because they have different kind of end goals to that so um, I don't really want to like read this word for word you guys can read it <laughs> on your own um, and if you have any questions I would really like to submit this by like the end of next week so if you guys have any questions or updates or anything please let me know so I can get that sent off because I really don't want to wait till the last minute so um, then I think what was the next Flip it over. There we go. B. Haley, could we could I yeah. ask a question? Of course. This? Under the invasive species, the yes. performance measurements, all other categories seem to have something specific, like uh, the types of units installed or on the bottom, yep. acres of bluff prairies restored. Yep. The the performance measurement for the invasive species. Is that intentionally vague or is that a fairly new thing that you don't have any kind of results? Yeah, or, good uh, question. So these, um, we're still working on invasive, so this is still a, a new, more of a new topic. Um, so, and it's more of an awareness instead of installing practices. So we can't have a number on installed practices if, in practices if we're just providing awareness to landowners we could put something in there about like the number of meetings that we hold or events that we hold to provide awareness yeah. um, and we are going to be working with the lake management grant and getting that started from my forecast I think we're gonna extend that I don't think we're gonna finish it in 24 because we're just starting that process so really it's the number of surveys we complete in order to work towards that lake management plan so it is broad because there isn't really a specific number that has been installed as of yet thank you yeah 
Haley, I also yeah. have a question. When we're talking about invasive species, um, I, the work plan is very specific to invasive species in lakes. Yes. Are, is that the scope? It is that the intended scope, or when we when I think about invasive species, mm -hmm. I think about that as noxious weeds and a bunch of yep. other things too. Yeah. So um, the last one I do have as terrestrial invasive species. So there is something in there right now. We do have the lake management plan, so we need to focus on the lake and the aquatic invasive species in the Trempolo lakes. So because of having three staff people and us, you know, we have one brand new. Me that's been here three years, Rick's that's two. We're trying to make sure that we're focused on, you know, one thing we can do it well instead of yeah all the things mm -hmm. and then just kind of half do it. So that's why it's focused this year on lake management. Um, I'm not saying we're not going to do terrestrial or you know the invasive species, noxious weeds stuff like that, but these are our top highlights. Sure, thank you for that. And then I just, yeah. one other question that, um, or maybe suggestion. Mm -hmm. The data that you've been presenting for the end of the year 2023 summary is, yes. is great. Like excellent work in the department and I love the 2024 plan. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in how that compares to other counties. Like how, how many different things did yeah. we implement as opposed to Jackson or Pepin County or yep. What is the average thing that the department yeah. is doing within the state? Okay. And how do we compare to that? Yeah, I don't have those numbers, so I can't give you an sure. answer on that today. But I can try to figure something out, you know, maybe for the February meeting. I don't want just, you to go through you know, a lot of work to do no, it if the data is if out I can, there, though. You know, maybe get some surrounding, just kind of like our neighbors. In the, in the past, <laughs> uh, I know there's a state report that comes out with uh, nutrient, nutrient management plans, mm -hmm. and we've looked shared our numbers uh, and we're able to compare it to the rest of the state. I can't remember when that report comes out. I'm guessing sometime this winter. Do you, do you remember at I all when that? I don't remember. Is, uh, but there is, we're able at least for that piece to definitely see how we compare it to the rest of the state. And I think we were above average if I'm remembering correctly. And, um, I, and I don't ask for the data because I'm concerned in any way of, yeah. of us not, meet, you know, but I like to benchmark. I think it's yeah. important to no, benchmark. That's, so mm -hmm. okay. I think that would be very beneficial. So I'll see what's out there and then I can, you know, bring at least something and potentially February if I didn't get something further I can always bring it again later Thank so you. yeah definitely look into that let me make a note so I don't forget surrounding counties okay um, more questions on the work plan yeah really not in the work plan but well you, you did mention uh, cover crops yes I've been reading hearing uh -huh. Some people have been concerned this year about cover crops and using up all the early moisture when we didn't get moisture and reduced production. Have you seen, heard anything in our county or our area in regard to that? Um, I heard less? maybe, you know, a little bit of rumble like they were concerned about it. Yeah. But I have heard actually the opposite now that people are taking um, crops off and getting their harvest numbers is that it's actually been the opposite. So they were like the producer led farmer the farmer group they were like i'm really surprised what my actual harvest numbers were so it was actually really interesting to hear about and have that kind of discussion in our meetings um, about what their harvest numbers were and really how cover crops helped them get into the fields because it was a little bit more wet in the spring and it provided them the ability to get into their fields because they didn't have all the mud so they were able to actually plant. So okay. it's kind of an interesting okay. trade-off, yeah. Yep. Um, any work plan questions? Tony. So since we have Parks Committee here, your conservation engineering part, and they're building a pond, have they consulted you, or is that nothing that would do with you part of that grant or the development of that pond? Yeah, so <clears throat> right now, um, I believe they're still working on the they just got the archaeological mm, plan I can, survey, I, survey I, I can report on that, <laughs> Haley. Um, yeah, um, um, we've hired, uh, PTED has hired a engineering company to design the, the plan, and, and that process is going forward. 
Um, it's just too much for our scope here in the county to do. Yeah, it yeah, and it, it's something Haley hasn't designed rec recreational ponds and all those kinds of things. So it's really unfair to kind of put that on her. And then with the work level, um, that's it's just something we need to contract out. So P. Ted has gone forward, uh, hired SRF Consulting, um, and uh, those meetings are going forward. And we um, hope to have a site plan. Uh, finished uh, by by spring uh, that works going forward and we're working closely with DNR on regulations regarding yeah. that. DNR yep. yep but I do think to your point though that you know making sure that um, the DLM is very involved in our project planning and you know what that does that look like I think is a really good um, thought I'll note on the um, 24 project plan that Haley has there is talk about uh, prairie um, in the park so yeah. they are involved you know in in the park activities too mm -hmm. the prairie is going to be beautiful next year yeah third year okay if there's nothing else on the work plan if you have questions again just let me know um, is it looks like B is a farmer farmland preservation program update I don't have a lot because I don't have a complete understanding of the farmland preservation ordinance that we have here in in the county since I haven't worked specifically with it so I don't have a great update personally for you guys but I did send out the legislative updates um, that DACAP did provide to you guys I think you should have gotten it maybe in an email um, and it was in your committee <coughs> packet so I figured I would give that to you guys we can read through it I do um, I have been consulting and working with um, Rick Reisinger in our office along with Morgan and we're gonna it's on our work plan to keep moving forward with farmland preservation see what we can do um, and get it a little bit more revived here in in Trempolo County so yes I have one thing too I see that cap is offering to host informational meetings yep and there's a contact person yes the county be so we all attended that? the meeting yeah <coughs> uh, end of December I think it was um, we did attend the first meeting I know there's another one next week as well so it is on all of our calendars to attend those and we are in contact with um, Wednesday Coy and yeah. Cody Calkins about the farmland preservation updates and they're going to come out with some more educational materials here in January and then after that staff will have a public information outreach strategy developed uh, to create some more awareness to the changes yeah because I think with the increased tax credits it might be um, interesting and to I bring and, it back. and I think the reduce the um, it's not supposed to come through like this um, <laughs> The, uh, the other thing is the, um, the reduced contract length is, I think, going to be very attractive to yeah. producers yep. and, and landowners out there. So, yep. And it is an income tax credit, not a tax credit. That's really important to think about. You know, um, that um, uh, So I think those are uh, some outreach and public information will help clarify um, the changes and kind of re-educate some people on what the program actually involves. I do see too that like the petition, the um, due, due date is August 2nd. So it is kind of a timely thing to yep. do. It, we have to get more yeah. information here January yeah. and it's and gonna be it's snowballing gonna from be there. <laughs> this year. Yeah. Because yeah. our current contract I see expires in uh, December of 2026. So. Is that like a blanket that covers all the farmland preservation currently in Trimple County? Well, there's just the one ag enterprise area. One ag enterprise that allows mm -hmm. it, correct. So it's, it isn't the whole county. Nope, it's just, it's just all of our whatever community. land qualifies. Yeah. Correct. And our, I think it's the ordinance that is yep. due in 2026. So okay. we'll start looking at it now yep. so that we're not rushed here in 25 and 26. So um, that's what I have for those. We'll move on to the cost share payments. <laughs> um, and I will. <clears throat> bounce over to Amy to give those updates and if you have questions I can definitely jump in all right so this morning I have two payments um, for the notice of discharge and with Haley's persistence this is wrapping up so this will be the last two payments 
Um, so the two together, the total balance is $50,774.70 is what I am requesting to pay these last two contractors. Okay. Um, a motion from the floor to motion. pay? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion by Klein, second by Larson. Any other discussion? Be nice to get this one done, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. All in favor of approving these cost shares, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. You're I think good. that's it. If you, unless right. you guys have questions, I was trying to keep it brief, but <laughs> apparently I didn't. <laughs> you did. You know, you did good. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. so I do have one quick question. Sure. Yeah. So on the the funding in the first report that you showed us. Yep. Um, is there any time limit on using that money or is that all a reimbursement? How so it, it depends on which funding it is. They all have different time frames um, and <laughs> extension <laughs> guidelines and everything like that. So bond, so anything from DACAP, it's usually, mm, I shouldn't even say anything. Some of them are one year, you can do one year extension. So that's how some of them that we have are. So I can send out a more detailed information on that if you would like. I don't want to take more time of describing each one. Yeah, and I think we've probably discussed this, but it's been a year since we've probably Correct. Got it, so thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Does the committee want to donate to this auction fund anything or no? Or since Park has, is anything here? Anybody thought of anything? So people just donate what they, what they come up with and then you'll put the Yeah, so there's together. there's two options. Um, we can either, if you guys come up with something, um, either personally or as a committee as a whole, we could do a basket as a whole. Or if you would like to designate, say, $100 from the land and water checkbook, we can then send me to go find a basket and put it together. You know, we could do a cheese and wine basket. We could do, you know, anything along that line. So. Two options, I guess those are kind of where. So these funds, do they go just to the state and then they're dispersed by whomever or whatever you bring to the auction, you get those funds? So it is a state um, as a whole. So it goes to the, or the youth education throughout the state of Wisconsin put on by land and water. So that includes Envirothon, they do um, middle school camps, high school camps, they do land judging contests, it is, the poster speaking contests, but, but all the of those. state gets all of those dollars yes. and then disperses it out to the counties. And, and we do not see them from the counties. And, they okay. use it for their events. And let's, okay. it's not the state of Wisconsin. It's the Wisconsin Land and Water Association. It's a nonprofit that we're a member of as a county that does advocacy for uh, conservation and provides, does a lot of our training for staff when it comes to conservation. So. It's a not statewide nonprofit organization. So for the Parks Committee, I believe what we decided was each individual person was going to come up with something. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's what we have to do here. In the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking about, hmm, I've got some things that would maybe work for a, a bird watching or bird feeding type basket that maybe I could contribute, that type of thing. But I'm certainly willing to we could always think about it as a group Cover crop seeds or something sure or whatever. Yep. I mean. what's the preference of the group yeah <laughs> and if you'd like you can you know tell me to get something from you guys if we wanted to do it that way through the um the lcc checkbook so which is funded by tree and shrub for youth education and stuff so, so it does it would fit it use would. those funds yes it has been done in the past <clears throat> I think that would be a, a wise way to go simpler for sure yeah, yeah mm -hmm. probably easier for you to know that okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah it'd be done <laughs> is there a no, dollar, no, dollar amount figure I would prefer said, some sort of dollar I mean I don't think a hundred's out of line yeah. it may be too low I don't know yeah I think a hundred's probably fine if we wanted to stay 100 or less, probably would be where it would say. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely do that. And we'll then I will let you guys know. Make a motion to donate the $100 to the land and water auction. 
Perfect. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? Otherwise, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank so you. You can take care of that. Will That'd do. Be great. I will let you know in February. Thank you. Um, so I think that concludes Haley's portion. Yes. Thank you. Um, item number 11 is Land Conservation Committee Checkbook Transition to the County Budget. Yeah, the county che uh, uh, the checkbook uh, is a checking account that goes back to the 1970s, um, back when we had soil conservation districts. It's kind of just hung on there, hung on there as a way to pay for bills. Now we're in a much different way of how we deliver conservation. Um, we have a letter from the auditor, uh, and, and this is not new. The auditor has been requesting this, and it's been part of input for many, many years. The auditor at Baker Tilly um, uh, says, uh, from an internal control perspective, eliminating the checkbook and running transactions through the receding disbursement processes as the rest of the county would be best. The fewer decentralized cash handling points, the better. So this is something that comes from the auditors. Um, we have the county clerk here and the treasurer here, and I think uh, they can speak for themselves, but I think they support the changeover on this. Uh, it's also duplication. We've mainly been using this checking account for depositing and paying bills related to the tree and shrub program. We have a tree and shrub non-lapsing account. So why do we have a checking account? And we have all these other line items in our budget. There's no reason why we can't function without this checking account. And in fact, we can do anything we need to do. Um, if we need to cut a check quickly, um, you know, obviously uh, they don't want to uh, write checks frequently on a, on a, on a as-need basis, but the county clerk's office has been very open and willing to cut checks quickly when it comes to paying some tree and shrub order stuff on a, um, when turnaround is really important. So, uh, but they can speak for themselves if, if you, if you want to hear from them. Thoughts from the committee? Questions regarding this? Seems like some. Just a good thing because yeah. it'll be on our books. That's. Right now it's technically not in the water system because your transactions aren't on the books. Yeah, no, it seems yeah. pretty straightforward to me. I, I think I think it makes <coughs> makes sense from an economic standpoint, from an accountability standpoint, and probably easier to work with. Less, yeah, just less, less. it simplifies our, right. our budget pr process and our, and our financial management system. I'm assuming we need a motion. Yes. Yes. Okay. I would like to make a motion to transition the Land Conservation Committee checkbook to the county budget. I'll, I'll second that. That sound like it would. We did this in university extension. It went back, and it must have been before. This already is too. Sure. Okay. So it's good enough motion though that does what we need to do. I'll find out if I go back far enough to see if the resolution was done. Like I said, I went back to twelve. Probably just a motion. I think. I don't know if you we'll make the, how about this? We'll make the motion if we need to do it more formal with the resolution. We'll deal with it in February, but at least we have Corp Council present. Yeah. Well, I, I'm thinking also, <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking also because then if it's on the books, we'll have a budget also. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to work on the budget, and that probably would have to go to the county board. So we could do it all in one shot there. That's fine. And that's what I'm thinking we did with PTEC, not PTEC, uh, PAC. Uh, extension? Yeah. Okay. So this point then, motions. We're gonna pull it off the table. No. I think we still need to do the motion to them forward, right? And then we'll go finish it in February. 
Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of um, disbanding this checkbook and moving everything to the county budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We will finish that up and with proper language and February is needed. Yeah. Uh, item number 12, we have a zoning, some zoning ordinance map and text revisions to take a look at. Um, I don't know if Mark, I think Mark was online. He was, he is still. So um, I guess he can talk about the town of Gale, uh, but Mark can add in more on the residential public utility district. If you remember, this is an area that's uh, on the zoning map in the town of Dodge. Uh, it, going back to around 2010, it got on the zoning map, but there isn't a corresponding district in our code describing the uses and all that. And I don't, haven't been able to figure out exactly how that came to be and and I kind of got tired of trying to figure it out but it just bottom line is it needs to be fixed and um, I believe Mark is going to bring that code amendment uh, forward at the February meeting and if Mark is here maybe he can can you hear me pipe it. Yeah. can you hear me yep yes. there we go. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here, but uh, yeah, that's something that we just need to clean up as far as language goes, and then it kind of ties into the next item where table of uses would um, reflect what's allowed in that zoning district once it gets identified, because yeah, the town of Dodge, uh, their desire was to keep the residential public utility district identified and not change it. So that's kind of where that one stands. So that you're working on proper language for defining that then? Yeah, I, th I think we should be, you know, make the definition clear on, you know, there is a definition in some of our, it's not in the ordinance, but it's in some, uh, you know, some references that we can, we can come up with a pretty, pretty simple definition for, okay. for it, I guess, and it would probably be more specific just for the town of Dodge. Okay. I don't know how I'm getting heard here, but I've been, it's been kind of glitchy as far as the audio on my end, so I don't know how it's working on that end. We're hearing most of it, I think. Yeah, you're cutting out yeah. in just bits and pieces, right. but I think we're getting the message. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think we okay. could kind of combine all these things probably, hopefully at the next meeting, and they can all be cleaned up. Okay, so we'll, we'll visit the item A and B likely at the next meeting then? I would say yes. Yeah, and some of the B, st uh, some of the B, uh, part of the B table of uses, uh, we can add things like uh, special events. Um, uh, you know, we have a lot of wedding barns out there, pizza barns, so we can address those kinds of things in there as well. Um, we w may want to specifically address wineries and distilleries, and also add some definitions to our code. Um, uh, when we look at egg tourism, a lot of times what we're seeing is uh, um, these wineries and distilleries, and um, they can work, uh, but um, we should update our table uses to address those types of things. Okay. All right. I think that's something we will. Um, so, Mark, you'll work on some language, and we'll continue discussion next month on that? Yes, I have gotten some information from Mike and also I've looked at other counties to see how they've addressed it and sometimes it's all over the board but I think we can come up with something that would would meet our requirements okay I like that um, yeah. all right Oops, go ahead, Randy. it could reflect like there was some changes at the state level with winery hours and things like that and yeah okay that sounds good. <clears throat> Anything else from uh, you then on Mark on A and B or we? No, I think we pretty much covered it. Okay. Uh, then item C would be Town of Gale zoning map. I think that's something you were working on. Yeah, the Town of Gale actually had a meeting and they approved it. 
Um, we propose to uh, make some changes to some of their zoning districts by, you know, some of the commercial properties were not identified as commercial properties. You know, some of the churches and things like that weren't identified as institutional. Uh, there was a couple subdivisions that were still uh, under the agricultural district identification. So we kind of made a proposal to change those to R20 and then the other ones to institutional and commercial where needed. Uh, they had a hearing at their level. Uh, there was no public input at the hearing, just a very minimal questions. And uh, um, I t talked with them just here recently within the last week. Uh, they're going to kind of draft some type of resolution to justify and reiterate that they did approve this at the time frame at that meeting and they want to change their zoning district maps to reflect what was proposed and I think that should be able to move forward pretty quickly too okay <clears throat> that's very good and in, in the with these town rezonings the t you know uh, the town is the formal petitioner while we work with the town and and uh, you know, ultimately, these recommendations are formally coming from the town as the petitioner. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so that kind of wraps up Town of Gale, Town of Hale zoning. Is that something? Very that would be working? Verge is working on that. Part of the issue with the R8 zoning is that any agricultural chicken barn, whatever, has to have a conditional use permit to be in that zoning. Um, so that was something they had expressed in that resolution to change. So I am working on that. I have the letters ready to go out once, you know, this date, the meeting date is set for next month. Um, I have the letters ready. I have the envelopes. I'm getting those ready. Um, I have been in contact with um, the town of Hale clerk because I met with the Corporation Council Susan Fisher and she recommended that I have a formal petition of map amendment like I do with all the rezones so I was able to get that from them um, I have not been able to personally meet with the town of Hale so I'm moving ahead with the petition and the letter um, and that will move forward and hopefully that'll be on the agenda for next month okay okay Anything else? I think that probably is going to clean up that. We'll deal with that in February. Uh, item number 13, commercial zoning and rural area issue. Discussion possible. Yeah, we had this uh, uh, <coughs> item brought up at a previous meeting here, um, and the committee wanted to hear back on that. Uh, we had uh, discussions with staff internally. Uh, we had discussions with uh, property owners and a, comp uh, and, and, and a complainant. Um, the complainant has uh, uh, dropped uh, his complaint. Uh, but as we discussed earlier in the agenda with the table of uses, we have some items uh, that will address um, and uh, give us more tools to address some of these uses. And uh, going forward, uh, we can. Uh, uh, you know, so, some of these areas, uh, we can take a closer look at what should be commercial and what shouldn't be. Uh, we also, you know, within our egg districts, we have ability to have home-based home accessory businesses, but some of these businesses uh, get uh, larger, um, and so they really need to have commercial zoning. Uh, so some of this ties back to uh, what the towns are including in their plan for future developments. One of the challenges in this kind of stuff too is these develop, commercial developments out in these rural areas, they happen over many, many years, sometimes over 20 years. And so there's incremental additions as they go on. And so that gets to be a little challenging. But uh, so we reviewed it internally with staff and we have a strategy going forward and you'll see some of those proposed ordinance changes next month. Okay, we will Rediscuss that next month. Keep working on it. Next item is future agenda items. 
Yeah, yeah there's a number, I listed a number of items here. You may or may not want to address these in the future, but these are potential suggested ones. Um, uh, the item A is, a, is a, almost one we have to have to do. Um, if you recall, we have uh, in our current committee structure, we have a um, uh, we have a we're supposed to have a member from FSA, FSA um, but FSA is not allowed to participate via their own decision as an or organization. Uh, in 2023, the state legislature amended um, uh, state statutes to allow uh, it, it's uh, someone that has an egg interest and they have a broadly defined definition of what an egg interest is to be added to conservation committees. And so um, I believe Rick and maybe Sue, I, I, with the changeover, I don't know, I can't remember who was working on it, but there is some work that's been done. And I, uh, um, it could be a beekeeper, it could be a Christmas tree farmer, it could be a CAFO farmer. It, it's very broad. So that definition. Um, but so anyways, that's an important thing to take a look at. Of course, we have the Town of Hale and Gale map amendments and some various other ordinance amendments coming up. The Uniform Dwelling Code contract <coughs> is up in August 2023. My guess is, however that gets addressed, my guess is the the, the inspection fees are gonna go up. Uh, so that might require the increasing of fees as well. And um, so that's something to be aware of and start working on sooner than later. Um, one thing I would encourage is that contract uh, whatever contract is signed that it runs to the end of the calendar year makes it a lot cleaner for dealing with. Um, and then uh, I met with the town of Trempolo, um a couple of weeks ago and we had a, a long discussion about various uh, ordinances things. Um, one of the things they're frustrated with as well as, as staff is dealing with junk and I did share that our new corporation council has a little bit different approach to it. Um, it uh, so we ho hope to get some better results from that. Uh, but one of the suggestions that the town had was maybe the, the county needs to consider uh, stepping in and paying for the cleanup of this junk. So I'm throwing that out there. That was the suggestion. Um, they also had a very strong um, concern on the driveway ordinance regarding uh, uh, the slope of driveways that were allowed. We, we, our requirement is uh, a maximum of 20%. The town of Trempolo, their own ordinance is 15%. Of course, we only enforce the county ordinance, um, but they would like the county to take a fresh look at that. Uh, one of their concerns is that the newer modern day emergency management equipment uh, may not do so well on the steeper slopes on 20%, so they're requesting that that a new look at, take a look at that. Same with the stormwater ordinance. Uh, Trempolo has some issues on some things that predates the our county stormwater ordinance. That ordinance was uh, adopted in 2010. Um, and while the ordinance, you know, so it, that could, t a fresh look might be in order on that. Um, and maybe the at the point where stormwater kicks in, stormwater kicks in, maybe that that size of acreage needs to be reduced. But I think also for town of, of Trempolo, they may need to hire an engineer to do some kind of hydro study um, because there's roads 
potentially limited culverts and things like that. So when you have uh, the ground still frozen, where does the water go, um, and and some of those types of things. So I, I, ordinances can address things going forward. It's hard to for ordinances like stormwater ordinances to address you know development that happened prior to that. Uh, so it may need to be a combination of, of ordinance review and uh, some other work. Um, and then they also talked about uh, Town Tremplow's interest in possibly um, amending their minimum lot size up to two acres. So those are some things coming down the pike. Okay. I think it's important that we have this list and so we can stay focused and uh, keep working on that. So thank you. For compiling those things uh, anything else from the committee otherwise next item well next item is confirming our next meeting date which is Wednesdays February 7th uh, stick with the 830 time frame I think it seems to be working unless there's objections so we'll stick with that and our next go ahead Dave uh, end of this month Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We can we can entertain changing it. That's why it's up for discussion. Um, do you have a different date that you would um, throw out? Or time? Well, date probably. My, my thought would be just move it up, move it week to the next Wednesday. Does that work? Fourteenth. It's Valentine's Day. Room booking, but that's. Pardon? Shouldn't conflict with room booking. That's up to you. I mean, uh, usually there ain't nothing on that following Wednesday. But right. No. Wednesdays and Thursdays is your other committee. Right. I would think we'd be okay on the Wednesday. We can confirm that. Is that okay? I would struggle at that same time. I could do later in the day if anyone would entertain that. What's later in the day? Afternoon. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, a different date. Date, yep. Yeah. That'd be the other thing to look at. I do have a day with DACAP scheduled for the 14th, so I won't be here, but I can, or like all of conservation will not be here on the 14th, sure. just as a. Could we thought. do the 13th? That's a two, or wait, is that going to. No, that wouldn't conflict with. Uh, not else here. We have think? highway that morning, okay. tentatively. How about the 15th then? Personal what bargaining about here. that Friday instead? The 9th? The 9th. Oh. Yeah, that'd be fine to me. Generally, there's not meetings on Friday, right. so. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. Look so Friday, February 9th, yeah. 8.30. Yep. And that will be in the new boardroom, right? I would expect so. <laughs> that means we should find it before that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stick yourself up for a hitchhike. <laughs> and just be aware, I think, uh, the next meeting you'll need to enter from the new entrance yep. Yep. and I think that all starts next Monday is at the new entrance from the email I recently received so for the committee members and people in the public starting January 8th uh, you're gonna need to go in the new entrance on Hobson Street so this one will be closing is a Friday that's my understanding so I can't okay. badge enter anywhere else that's no. my understanding okay. okay big changes all right, so right now we are moved to February 9th, uh, Friday, February 9th, for our next meeting. And with that, the next item on agenda is a closed session, and I would need somebody to read and make that motion. All okay, right, we are on the air again. Um, so we are back out of closed session. Um, do we have a motion to, what, what are we looking for? A motion to affirm the actions taken in, in closed session. I make a motion to affirm the actions taken in closed session. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Um, mm -hmm. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. 
Uh, that is all we had for today. And with that, sorry to do this to your TV studio, but we're going to adjourn the meeting <laughs> at 1047. <laughs>